this is your sign to play Fire Mage in 2024. All right, let's start with a quick introduction. My name is Preheat. I'm the Wowhead Guide Writer for Fire Mage and Devastation Evoker. Today, we're going to be talking about Fire Mage in patch 10.2. So we're going to be covering everything you need to know about it. So that's going to be best Fire Mage talents, best gear, preferred stats, best trinkets, consumables, tier 31 tier bonus, how to play with Flame Accelerant. We'll also be talking the opener, cooldowns, and rotation for Fire Mage in both single target and AoE. And that's going to be for the AoE build and the Ignite build. But before we move on, let's talk about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. When it comes to standing desk or really any sort of kinetic furniture, FlexiSpot is the brand that immediately comes to mind for me. I'm actually a big fan of their products and I reached out to them to get this sponsorship. When it comes to standing desk, it's really important that you get a quality product because you're putting a lot of weight on it. It's a lot of expensive equipment, so you gotta go for quality. Here you can see me putting together the FlexiSpot E7 Premium Standing Desk and the C7 Premium Ergonomic Office Chair, using both of these products and loving them. So my favorite thing about the E7 Premium Standing Desk is that it actually has this little touchpad on it that you can plug your USB into if you want to have an easy access to one of those ports. You can also set presets. So whenever I'm using the desk, I'm either sitting or standing and it's always the same heights. So I set those up exactly the way I like them. You just have to press the button. It'll do the work on its own. If you're looking to upgrade your setup, use the link in the description below or in the pinned comment to go visit the FlexiSpot website and go check it out. And keep in mind that any purchases you make do help the channel. So once again, thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Let's get on with it. All right, let's start with the talents. And in Dragonflight, they revamped the talent system. Uh, I'm not going to go over each and every talent. You can always read the talents yourself. But uh, this is going to be kind of the general setup when it comes to our build. Uh, we're going to focus on the class side first here. So important talents obviously are going to be stuff like Ice Block. This is an immunity, and we actually have a different version of it now with Ice Cold, where basically we can cast it off the GCD. It's a 70% damage reduction, but it no longer makes us immune. This is generally a really good option, though, unless you need the immunity of Ice Block. Um, also, down in the Capstones, other stuff that we will definitely want to route to, it's going to be Temporal Warp. Uh, it's really important you understand how this talent works, because this is basically our own Bloodlust on roughly a 4 minute, 20 second cooldown. Um, and this actually stacks with Bloodlust. So if you use Bloodlust and then you press it again, um, you will have double the Bloodlust. And this is one of the ways that Fire Mage is able to get so much haste that we actually cast Fireballs in our Combustion, just like as our default. Uh, and then obviously we also have stuff like Radiant Invisibility. This is just a huge damage reduction that also makes us invisible. Uh, we have talents that make us run faster if we have it. Um, also Mass Barrier, it's just giving our Barrier, which is Blazing Barrier. Uh, for Fire Mage, just to everyone around us. Uh, Dragon's Breath, which is a uh, disruption. This is used as a stop usually in Mythic Plus, but uh, it can be useful for all sorts of stuff. If you need a Disorient, it does decent damage in AoE too. Um, and then everything else is just kind of about getting to the important stuff, right? Or it's throughput talents. So stuff like Tome of the Ronin, Tome of Antonitis, uh, these are both throughput talents. They just give us stats, so we're always going to want those talents because not every talent is going to increase our damage, right? Uh, and then obviously in the middle, we have stuff like Shifting Power, always useful. Make sure you always have Shifting Power, um, either Shimmer or Ice Flows. It's kind of up to you on which one you want to play here. Uh, in a lot of cases, it comes down to a fight by fight basis. But uh, personal preference is also a, a big thing to consider here. Personally, I'm more of a fan of Ice Flows generally, but Shimmer is uh, probably more useful across the board when it comes to rating. Uh, and then other stuff that you should be aware of, uh, Blast Wave is a knockback. You can pick up the talent below at Volatile Detonation. This makes it knock further. Very useful for Sanguine Weeks. Alter Time is just like a generally good uh, defensive. You can use it to basically snapshot your health and your location and press it again and go back to where you were. You can also use it as a way to just get a free extra shimmer or blink uh, with Master of Time, which is the talent we take right below it. And then there's going to be like little defensive things like magic damage taken reduction. You probably always want this. Uh, shields whenever you blink. Mirror Image is a damage reduction. It lasts 40 seconds. It also pauses our threat, so very, very strong talent. Make sure that you're pressing Mirror Image before the pull and try to kind of use it whenever you feel any sort of damage is coming or if you're ever in danger of pulling threat. Uh, and then down here, Energized Barriers. This sounds very useful for entangling because anytime you get it, you can just press your Blazing Barrier instead of having to leave the circle and it'll automatically get rid of the snare. Also, there are a lot of snares that you'll encounter either in Mythic Plus or Raiding that, uh, that deal a lot of damage to you, and this allows you to just basically remove them by just pressing your barrier. So 
really, really important. And then obviously we also have stuff like spell steal allows us to uh, steal magic effects for two minutes. That's more of a just a dispel usually. Uh, stuff like remove curse, which is also utility, very useful for afflicted. Um, and then whenever you are up against like incorporal or something like that, you're going to be using polymorph. That's not a talent. It's just uh, it's just a skill you have. But you obviously also have other stuff like mass, polymorph, slow. Uh, Ring of Frost can be pretty useful in a lot of cases. It's mainly used in PvP, but it'd be really useful in Mythic Plus too. You just basically put down the ring and anything that gets close gets incapacitated and then slowed once they break out. But um, yeah, I mean, I encourage you to experiment with the talents yourself, but generally you're going to have something kind of like this. Moving on to the fire side of the tree, the first thing you need to understand is we deal damage primarily with Pyroblast. Pyroblast is our spender. It's a long cast time, but it actually becomes instant cast whenever we get a hot streak proc. Hot streak is what happens whenever we get a heating up, which basically we me means we, we get one crit and then we get a second crit or we convert the crit with a fire blast that creates instant cast pyroblast. It's called hot streak. OK, and combustion is going to be our main cooldown. Now, it says two minutes, but combustion will almost never be two minutes. It's always going to be much shorter. There's a lot of ways combustion gets reduced. Shifting power obviously is one way but also it gets reduced by kindling, which is every time we crit with pretty much all of our spells, we also get cooldown reduction. Combustion makes it so that we gain extra mastery equal to 75% of our critical strike stat, but mainly it makes it so that we just crit with everything. That's kind of like the big bonus of combustion. Obviously, there's other things that tie into this too, but combustion uptime is a very core component of Fire Mage, and you're going to be spending a lot of time in combustion. The reason why is because we also generate combustion with Sun King's Blessing. This is a talent that you have to understand to play Fire Mage because it is so core to how the gameplay works. Every time you consume eight hot streaks, so that's eight instant cast pyroblasts or flame strikes, you're going to be able to hard cast, you know, to actually do the, the long cast of pyroblast, and you will gain combustion for six seconds. And this actually gets added to your combustion if you use the Sun King's Blessing and right before you finish your hard cast, you press combustion. It'll actually tie in those 12 seconds plus the six seconds. So then you'll have, uh, you know, 18 seconds instead. Now, Fire Mage is an uptime spec. It's something that has kind of a, a feedback loop when it comes to how you play it. And the reason why is because Sun King's Blessing is a main, is a big generator of our combustion uptime. And then combustion uptime is our primary generator of crits, which is how we gain hot streak, which is how we get Sun King's Blessing. So these both feed into each other. Uh, you can think of it kind of like a train. Like if you if you're playing Fire Mage and you're doing everything right, you're going to have very high uptime on combustion and you're able to generate most of your next Sun King's Blessing during your combustion buff. But if something happens during combustion and you can't cast spells or you're out of range or you're CC'd or something else, um, that's going to hamper you a lot because you aren't going to be able to generate the stacks for your next SKB whenever you're inside of your combustion. And so the train derails. Um, it's very easy to keep your momentum as Fire Mage as long as you're playing well. But if something happens and you get derailed, it's going to be hard to get back on track. So it's very important as a Fire Mage that you do not waste Sun King's Blessing stacks. We don't want to be casting Hot Streak if we have Sun King's Blessing available. We need to be using Sun King's Blessing as soon as it becomes available. That way we can start generating stacks towards our next Sun King's Blessing and so on and so forth. But uh, when it comes to talents, you can actually move around here. So this is the rating build, but uh, stuff like Control Destruction, you can remove Flame Accelerant. Um, you'll see sometimes people running other things, but generally speaking, I recommend these two talents. Control Destruction doesn't really take any extra thought. It just kind of works. Um, Flame Accelerant is pretty hard to play. There's actually a lot to it, and we'll talk about that more in just a bit. But um, it's a very strong talent, and it's actually even stronger than you think because there is an exploit you can make use of with this. We can uh, basically cheat to get extra procs. It's not really something you can always nail down. I mean, it's a, it's a bit finicky, but um, we'll, we'll be discussing that. Uh, but if you want to kind of play around with other stuff, one thing that you'll see a lot of people running in logs is like Alex Charles's Fury. Um, this is just a great talent. Like it feels great to play. It makes it so your Phoenix Flame always crits. Um, normally we only use Phoenix Flame inside of our combustion because we mainly just want to use it as a way to get crits. But with this talent, you can actually use it outside of combustion. It also makes Dragon's Breath a, a way to generate Hot Streak too. So this is a fantastic talent, especially if you're starting off to maybe pick up instead of Control Destruction. Um, you'll also sometimes see people running Meteor. Meteor can be very useful if there's ever situations where there's targets that are stacked up. 
You can deal a whole bunch of damage to that maybe spawn like every 45 seconds. So stuff like uh, a gear of the cruel, for example, right? This is really great for the spears or anytime there's like a bunch of ads that pop up. Um, it's just a generally good talent. You might also see people running stuff like Inflame. The, the fact of Fire Mage is just that there's a lot of talents. They're all very strong um, and about the same power. So you're going to see experimentation because it's really more so about like the individual player skill level as opposed to the exact build. But if you're looking for like the quote unquote best build, this is going to be it for rating. Also, I should mention Firestarter. This is a talent that's actually really good, but we do not really use it anymore because we just have so much crit now that we don't really get the full value out of Firestarter. But at the start of expansions or whenever we have like less crit kind of built into our character, this can actually be really, really useful. It's just that now if you have some gear, you probably have kind of a mix between haste, crit and versatility. So having a lot of crit makes Firestarter just way less uh, powerful. It's it, it, really the power of Firestarter is having less crit, is having as little crit as possible. That's when Firestarter is good. It's just not really good anymore. It kind of fell off. When it comes to Mythic Plus, you're going to find that the only consensus in Fire Mage talents is that there is no consensus. And depending on what the key level is, you're going to see people running wildly different builds. So I'm going to start with what you're probably going to be running in keys that are lower. So let's say keys up to like 25 or so um, where targets are dying a little faster and the damage is, is happening a lot quicker. It's much more upfront. So like in low keys, this is what I recommend. This is the Flame Strike Flame Patch build. Core parts of this build are Fuel to Fire and Flame Patch. Uh, and basically with this build, you are casting Flame Strike as your main spender instead of Pyroblast. Uh, now, Flame Strike normally doesn't return any sort of heating up hot streak, but if you have Field of Fire, it does. Okay. And uh, Flame Patch is nice because it allows us to kind of have like a passive damage over time whenever we throw out our Flame Strike. It's just extra damage. Of course, we also run Incendiary Eruptions to get a little bit more extra damage with those free Living Bomb uh, explosions. By the way, you don't actually have to have a Living Bomb for this talent, it just works without it. And then um, you'll see usually people running stuff like Alex Straza's Fury and Call the Sun King, Phoenix Reborn with this kind of build. The reason you're going to see people lean more towards Phoenix Flame whenever people are playing Flame Strike is because it allows us to just generate more Flame Strike. And Alex Straza's Fury is just generally good whenever there is like AoE damage you can be doing. But this is just one option. I want to emphasize that there are all sorts of different ways you can do this. The talents are all very close. Um, what you'll see in like real keys or higher keys is the ignite build. And the idea with the ignite build is you do not cast flame strike. Um, you basically treat every single pull as if you are attacking a single target, but the fire that you're putting on that main target is going to be spreading to all the other targets through ignite. So that's why you're going to see people running this build right here where you have stuff like fire starter, um, and then talents to emphasize ignite because you're just trying to get your ignite on those extra targets, you're trying to have them all burn together. And the higher damage you deal to your single, your primary target, the more damage you do to the rest of the pack. The reason this doesn't work in low keys is because you just don't have sturdy enough targets to be kind of burning everything else around it with, right? Like your target will just die and your ignite will die with them and then your damage is gone. So you have to have nice sturdy targets to make this build work. That's one of the core components of it. Uh, and I didn't mention this before, but Firestarter is very good in this setup because you can have a bunch of targets to choose from, right? So let's say you're working on one target and that target reaches below 90%. Well, as long as you just use the Fire Blast, your Ignite should be kind of equal across the board. So then you can target the next best target, which may also have high health, and you can make use of that Firestarter. And you can basically just keep bouncing around different targets and making use of Firestarter and keeping that up for a longer portion of the fight than you would normally be able to. So people often run Firestarter in this build, even though you'll probably already have a lot of crit. Um, also, you could just run less crit in general and run more mastery as this build and have higher ignite. And the less crit you have, the better Firestarter gets. Also, you'll notice that in both the rating build and the Mythic Plus builds I'm showing here, we, we often have Living Bomb and uh, Convection and Firefall. Um, we really only take these talents to make our way over to Firefall. Firefall is just a lot of damage. It's good in single target. It's good in AoE. Um, but there are cases where Living Bomb is good. Like if you, there are five or more targets, pressing Living Bomb, as long as you aren't inside of your combustion, is usually worth it. It's just Living Bomb isn't a very good talent, so generally we avoid it. Uh, and then obviously Meteor is just good across the board, right? Like Meteor is no longer split when it comes to its damage. It just deals a lot of damage to a bunch of targets. So it's really, really good, especially for building up as much Ignite as possible on your main target because Meteor is, uh, it does cause Ignite, right? There's a huge amount of Ignite you're going to be gaining through Meteor. 
But um, the nice thing about the Ignite build once you get to those high keys is that you do not have to play really any differently than you would play in single target. Because again, you're just trying to build up as much Ignite on your primary target as possible. And uh, you're just trying to build that Ignite up so that you can spread it to the other targets. And then as you do your Fire Blast to spread it or your Phoenix Flame, that's when you can swap targets if you need to. And as if that wasn't enough, there actually is another version of the Ignite build that you will see people sometimes using. Uh, in this version, we actually forego all of these points here, Living Bomb, Convection, and Firefall, since this isn't uh, very cost effective to try and get to this one. And we instead go with From the Ashes and Call of the Sun King. From the Ashes is nice because it just gives us extra mastery. And Call of the Sun King makes it so that we have an additional charge of Phoenix Flame, and it also makes our Phoenix Flame deal more damage. The whole idea with From the Ashes is you're trying to spin your Phoenix Flames as soon as they come up, so that you just have them all on cooldown. And the more Phoenix Flames you have on cooldown, the more damage you have because you just have more mastery. This specific version is, I think, less effective generally, but it is nice because you don't have to worry about Firefall missing. One of the most annoying things about the Mythic Plus build and rating build, honestly, just like anything that runs Firefall, is the fact that the meteor will just fall at semi-random intervals. I mean, it's not random, you can predict it, but it's it's not really in your control, right? And sometimes when the meteor falls, the tank will be moving and then the tank will just whiff the meteor. So it can be kind of annoying. Um, overall though, I think this one is the better of the Ignite builds, but just keep in mind that there is even more variety here than you probably thought. All right, let's go ahead and talk about mage abilities. And I'm not gonna talk about each and every ability individually just because it would take too much time to cover. But if you want more information on the abilities themselves, you can always check out my wowhead guide. You can also just place your cursor over the ability in your spellbook, and it'll show you a tooltip, giving you an idea of what the ability does. But uh, first up is arcane intellect. This just gives us intellect 5% of it. And it also is a raid buff. So anyone in the raid is going to receive this benefit, which is really nice. Next up is Blazing Barrier. So if you press this button, you get a 20% absorb shield over your health. Next up is Blink. Blink just teleports us forward and breaks us out of stuns, and it also gets rid of roots. GCD is a term that refers to global cooldown. So basically, if you press an ability and uh, you notice like on your bar that you're not able to press another ability while uh, that ability is like recovering, basically everything's recovering at the same time here. That is what is called the global cooldown. And uh, there are some abilities that are off the GCD, right? Such as your counter spell, which interrupts targets. So if you use a GCD and you press counter spell, it's still going to work. Next up is Ice Block. Ice Block is going to make us immune to damage. It will also clear any debuffs we have. Basically, while we're in our Ice Block, uh, under normal circumstances, we can't die. Next up is Mirror Image. So if you press Mirror Image, you summon your homies, right? And while they're out, you're going to take less damage. Um, also, what's really cool about this ability is while you have it out, your enemies are kind of confused by it. So you don't really generate threat like you normally would. All right, let's go ahead and talk about damaging abilities now. So first up is Fireball. Basically, you shoot out a little Fireball. It deals a, a small amount of damage, but that's not the real reason we actually use it. Uh, we like Fireball because it has the ability to crit. Um, so one crit is going to give us Heating Up. Heating Up is basically the first stage of Hot Streak, right? So if something is heating up, it allows us to then convert it into a Hot Streak if we get a second crit. And the reason why we want to generate Hot Streak is because it allows us to instant cast our next ability, Power Blast. We want to use Power Blast as an instant cast. So whenever we have a hot streak, we're actually able to just cast Power Blast uh, instantly. And uh, that's what the Fire Mage rotation is all about. It's about converting heating ups into hot streaks and then using those hot streaks as instant cast Power Blast. And how we convert these abilities into hot streaks typically is by getting a crit and then using this ability Fire Blast. Fire Blast is just instant. It's off the GCD. You can cast it while casting, right? You just press it. It deals damage and it's going to always crit. So that way you can just convert it. Uh, you're heating up into a hot streak automatically with it. Very nice for that. And lastly, we have Phoenix Flame and Scorch. Phoenix Flame is mainly used in combustion unless you're using Alex Straza's Fury, the talent. Uh, and this is just used as another way to generate hot streaks because it's going to crit in combustion. And Scorch is kind of used the same way. Usually it's a, a filler spell in your combustion. Above 100% haste, you wouldn't cast it. And also it becomes better whenever the enemy is in execute below 30% health if we have the talent for it. Uh, it also applies a debuff that makes the enemy take more damage. So these are both situationally useful. When it comes to gearing your Fire Mage, it really kind of depends on what your item level is in terms of which stats you should be prioritizing. Uh, there's this thing where your stats diminish whenever you get a certain amount of them. So we can't just stack haste forever. Haste will eventually become a stat that we no longer really want to keep pushing. Um, there is a uh, basically a fall off once you reach above 5,100 for haste. It's still probably going to be your best stat, but it won't be your best stat forever. So like in my case, I'm actually gymmed for crit. 
and I have enchants for crit because at around like 5,500 haste or so, just with my specific character, um, it was telling me then to try and put more points into critical strike and versatility instead. Um, but when it comes to stats, you really have to sim your own mage because it's going to be really dependent on what your character is as for like which stats are going to be the best. And this also depends on what you're doing, right? So like for raid, uh, you know, obviously recommending haste, crit and versatility primarily. But if you're doing mythic plus, especially if you're pushing higher keys and you're running like the ignite build, then you'll probably want to cut out some of that crit and move it over to mastery. Um, so you probably end up with your mastery being around like 4,000, 3,500, something like that, and mainly pulling those points away from your critical strike. When it comes to our embellishments, though, we're going to go with two Shadow Flame. Pretty simple. You can put this on any armor. It does not work on rings, but cloak works, bracers work, uh, boots, belt, whatever it is that you have at like the lowest item level that you can upgrade with the crafting system. That's probably going to be the best way for you to get your uh, your two Shadow Flame embellishments. And then when it comes to your trinkets, you're going to want the Bell Rose trinket and the Augury of Primal Flame. This is actually a rare trinket that drops off of the last boss, so it may not be something that you can just immediately get your hands on. But there are a lot of other trinkets that are fairly good, too. When it comes to other options for raid, Pips is fairly good. You can also use the Oak Hearts Gnarled Root. This one's also pretty good for raid. And then when it comes to Mythic Plus, it's a little bit different. So Balefire Branch is generally the best trinket for Mythic Plus. Um, you're either going to use that as your on use or you're going to use the Ashes of Embersoul. Both of those not so great in raid, but really, really strong in Mythic Plus if you're playing the Ignite build. And then whenever it comes to your other trinket for Mythic Plus, um, you can run the Coagulated Genosaur Blood. This one's fairly good, especially if you're running less crit. Or you can just run any of the trinkets that are good for raid. I mean, there's just a lot of good trinkets for Fire Mage. I mean, you can even use stuff like the Mirror of the Fractured Tomorrows, but um, a little bit of a long cooldown on this one, so maybe not so good. If you're looking for more information, you can always visit my Wowhead guide and I'll keep this up to date with uh, the best information. So um, whatever you're getting in this video, things could always change, right? Just go check out the Wowhead guide. Uh, link will be in the description below for the best trinkets. Augury is just really great, though, because we have so much crit built into our kit as Fire Mage. And uh, it just it really does a lot of damage. But obviously, it is RNG, too, right? Like if you don't get Augury procs, um, it's not really going to be doing damage. Belarus is just an overpowered trinket. Pretty much every class wants this trinket that's a damage dealer because if you press it, it just hits really, really hard. And the best thing about this trinket is you don't actually need to press it on its own. Like you can actually do it inside of a global. So just for example, if I click my meteor and then I immediately press my trinket like so, you'll notice that the trinket cast begins as soon as uh, I press my first ability. So it's during the global cooldown, I'm getting... The, uh, the, the ability to start casting my trinket. Essentially, I'm reducing the cast time of my trinket because I'm putting that cast time within my GCD, my global cooldown. And as you can see, it does a ton of damage. I mean, this was one use of the trinket and it did almost 2 million. This is with five targets, though. It scales up, uh, but um, it will start kind of falling off with more targets. It does have square root scaling. When it comes to the tier pieces to wear, it really just depends on what you have and what item level it is. Um, generally speaking, you're going to want to wear the tier slots that have the highest item level. Um, so if you get lucky from your vault, uh, then, you know, with like a hat or something like that with a socket, you probably want to forego the hat and then wear the rest of the pieces. But it really just depends on uh, what your situation is individually. For me, I've got high shoulders, high chest. Uh, my gloves are a little weak. My pants are a little weak. My helmet is also a bit weak. So I chose to just drop the helmet in favor of a crafted helmet. But um, yeah, it's going to be a case by case basis. You'll see a lot of mages just rocking five piece. Uh, because it really just doesn't matter. It's just up to what you have access to, what your other gear is, essentially. And then when it comes to weapons, there's two weapons that you want to get your hands on. That's going to be the rare weapon off of Nemu. This has an effect where if you click it, it just does damage. It's a two minute cooldown. Uh, it does more damage, actually, if the target is immobilized. But generally speaking, you just like macro this in with your Belarus. Use them at the same time every time because it's the same cooldown. Um, and this one's off the GCD, so you can just press it whenever you want. Uh, really nice to put in the macro with this one. Or you can go with the, the staff from Dawn of the Infinite if you're lucky. Um, hopefully you get this from the vault. It's really going to depend, again, on item level, on which weapon is going to be the best for you. But the Iridal staff is fantastic. It has this nice effect where it, it deals more damage whenever an enemy gets low by using its on-use effect. Kind of a long cooldown, but it gets reduced. So if you see one of these in your vault and it goes up to heroic item level, generally speaking, Iridal is just like the best weapon. I just haven't got my hands on one yet. The tier 31 tier bonus is really easy to understand. 
Every time you cast Power Blast in the crits, and every time you cast Flame Strike for every crit it does, it's going to give you one stack of a buff that gives you 4% critical strike damage, and that stacks 5 times to 20%. Now, whenever you activate combustion, the four piece bonus is that that 20% bonus goes up to 50% instead. Uh, now, there's not anything you really have to worry about when it comes to playing around this tier bonus. You just play normally and it just works. The only thing to really consider is if there's a, a chance that you can guarantee a flame strike crit and you have zero stacks and there's five enemies. If you were to use flame strike, you could instantly go to five stacks of the buff. But otherwise, there's really not anything you should even worry about here. And honestly, I wouldn't even track this bonus. Just know that it makes your combustion better and it gives you damage and it's really good. So at the most basic level, Fire Mage is about using all of your resources while maintaining your buffs and having as much combustion uptime as possible while casting as many Pyroblasts as possible. Pyroblast is the main driver of our damage. So we're trying to just get out as many Pyroblasts as possible. Um, in the opener, which is pretty complicated, we'll, we'll talk more about that in just a little bit, but uh, in the opener, you're going to just be doing a certain priority to get everything out as quickly as possible and try to make use of all your resources as much as possible. You don't have to go to this length if, if you're new to Fire Mage, um, but there is kind of a sequence that will help you get everything out the way you need to. Um, but of course, we want to precast and then we want to use our trinket just to get on cooldown and we need to get immediately into combustion. And we're going to use all of our resources here. So you're seeing me use a lot of Fire Blast. You're seeing me use my Phoenix Flames. As this build, you're not playing Alex Alexstrasza's Fury, so you don't uh, use your Phoenix Flames outside of Combustion. You're only going to be using them inside of Combustion. And we're also making use of Flame Accelerant. Um, now keep in mind, whenever you're above 100% haste as Fire Mage, um, you no longer use Scorch as your filler. So generally speaking, you use like Fire Blast and Phoenix Flame, and if you run out of those, then you'd use Scorch. Um, but since we're above 100% haste, we actually use Fireball instead. And if you're playing Flame Accelerant, then you would use Fireball anytime you have a Flame Accelerant available. And as soon as your SKB is available, which it just became available here, uh, we're going to use our SKB. We never want to use any Hot Streaks while SKB is available, because that's just going to munch Hot Streak procs, and a big part of Fire Mage is not munching anything. So um, if you ever have your SKB available, you should be hard casting your Power Blast just right away. And Shifting Power is something that we use uh, about 30 seconds usually into the pull. Um, obviously, it depends on if you lust the pull or not, but... You want to be using Shifting Power basically whenever you're outside of Combustion and you've used up all of your uh, Fire Blast um, and so we can get like those cooldowns back up. Uh, but don't don't fret about trying to get Shifting Power out right away. Um, if you're playing correctly, it should be coming up kind of as 30 minutes is happening. And we should be pretty much able to stay inside of our Combustion in our opener, just like going from SKB to SKB in Combustions. Um, that's, that's the way it should look. Uh, but we're going to talk about this more in depth. I just want to kind of give you like the broad strokes here first so that hopefully you can understand the rest of it. Let's talk about the opener a little bit more in depth, because if you can do the opener correctly, you can probably do the rest of it correctly. And I'm going to apologize to you in advance because this is going to get a bit technical, but I am going to slow this video down to make sure that uh, we can talk about all of this in, in fine detail. So, uh, you know, feel free to rewind this and, and watch this part again if you need to. Um, also, keep in mind that I do have a, uh, a timeline, like a cast timeline, that's going to appear on the screen here in just a moment. Once I begin casting, um, it's going to be right up here. See this? So whenever you're like trying to figure out which spells I'm using in what order, you can just look up here. It'll show the icon. And it'll show uh, where we are in the process. So before combat, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to use Mass Barrier and we're going to use Mirror Image. You don't have to do that, but it's just nice to get those out like right before you begin the pull. And then you're going to want to be a, around like max range from the target or, you know, somewhere between like 30 yards and max range. Whenever the pull timer is around three seconds, of course, this depends on your, your haste. But whenever you have enough time for your pyroblast to begin casting and finish and with the travel time hit at zero, that's kind of what you want to do. You want to have your pyroblast begin casting here at around three so that then it flies out. And the travel time right here. So you see the Fire Blast is finishing right as the timer is seeing zero. That was a little late, actually. But um, it's not a huge deal. Just as long as your Pyro Blast is hitting pretty much as the pull is beginning, that's ideal. Now, as soon as your Pyro Blast finishes, what we're going to do is we're going to use double Bloodlust and Potion. This is obviously assuming that we're Bloodlusting on the pull. Not every boss is going to have you Bloodlust on the pull. So obviously, if your guild is telling you not to use Bloodlust on the pull, then don't do that, right? Um, but if you are bloodlusting, this is what you're going to do. So double bloodlust, use your potion, um, and then you're going to start your solar maelstrom. And in this case, I'm actually playing shimmer. So I can begin my solar maelstrom out here and I can actually shimmer in with it before it goes off. See that? 
So if you're not playing Shimmer, then trying to use the Trinket right away might be a little bit more challenging. You might have to run into the boss or be closer. Just be aware that you would start your precast a little bit later if you did that. You don't want to pull it early. Um, but essentially the idea is we want to get our Solar Maelstrom Trinket off right away if we have this Trinket. Um, just so that the cooldown can start and we can start working towards our next usage of it. Um, so already we've already pressed, um, if we discount these two beginning spells, we've already cast one, two, three, four, five, six different things, including our potion, not including our weapon. Um, so there's a lot of button pressing as this class as Fire Mage. But uh, the idea here, the important stuff is just that you precast your Pyroblast and then you double Bloodlust and then use your potion if you're going to be using that. And then we are having our trinket going off right here in melee. Boom, and it hits. So... As soon as that goes off, the next step is we're going to begin casting a fireball. Keep in mind, this is going to be a really fast fireball because number one, we have flame accelerant, which is a buff to increase the cast time and damage of our fireball. Number two, we have double time warp. So our haste is probably going to be about 100% or higher. So as soon as you begin this fireball, what you need to do is press combustion and fire blast while you're mid cast. Now, in this case, I actually crit my beginning pyroblast. As you can see, I have a heating up here. Depending on if you get this heating up or not, will change what you do as this fireball finishes. So in this case, using combustion and fire blast is going to result in a hot streak. Okay, so I'm going to finish this fireball with a hot streak. If I did not have that first pyro blast crit, if I did not have a hot streak right now, and I just have a heating up, I would cast a second fireball. That is the only difference that you'll have in the opener is just whether or not you cast two fireballs in a row versus the single fireball. But make sure that you combustion and fire blast during that fireball cast. So right here, I'm going to cue this pyroblast with the end of my fireball. And this is going to be something we're going to refer to as double pyroblast. You'll see this a lot. We'll talk about it more in just a little bit. But essentially what we want to do is always be casting a spell. We do not want to be waiting for a spell to make contact before we do another thing. So you'll see here again, I have the hot streak ready. I'm queuing up the pyroblast with the fireball. They both hit at the same time. And now I'm able to use a second Pyroblast. Boom. So that's the double Pyroblast that we're referring to. So I'm going to show this one more time. So we're out here. We're just doing our mass barrier. We use our mirror image before the pull. We precast our, uh, our Pyroblast. As that goes off here, I double Bloodlust. I use my Trinket. I Shimmer in. I Fireball. Press Combustion and Fireblast here at the same time while Fireball is, is casting. And then I'm queuing up the Pyroblast as this cast ends. Boom, double power blast. Boom. See, two power blasts in a row. So you can see it represented right here, right? Fireball, combustion, fire blast, power blast, power blast. Okay. So the reason why we can use two power blasts in a row here is because the fireball and the power blast are both hitting at the same time and they're both critting and we're able to get that extra power blast. All right. Remember again, if you didn't crit on the first power blast, you're going to have to do two fireballs here. And then it would still end the same way. It would be on that second fireball. You'd finish it off with a, with a power blast. Okay, so now we're going to try and use up all of our Fire Blasts and our Phoenix Flames as quickly as we can. So I'm just going to go through alternating between Fire Blast, Pyro Blast, Phoenix Flame, Pyro Blast. I'm just going to keep using both of those. The idea is I'm trying to avoid using Fireball. Now, Fireball is what I should be using if I run out of Fire Blast and, and Phoenix Flames, but I'm avoiding using it because I want my Flame Accelerant to come back up. And I'm keeping track right over here. You see the five? This is how many stacks of SKB I have. The goal is to reach our SKB before we have to use a fireball. So I'm going to continue chucking along here using my fire blast, power blast, Phoenix flame, power blast until we reach our SKB. And right here at the very last second, that last fire blast comes up. We're at seven. I have the power blast in my hands. You always want to end seven, like going into eight with an instant cast. I, I don't want to be casting another spell right now. I want to be in an instant cast. The reason why is because if I were to, let's say, cast a fireball right now and finish all, finish it with a pyro blast, both of those are going to crit and I'm going to get a hot streak, but I have SKB. So then um, this is what we refer to as not having exact change. So like in this case, I have exact change because I have SKB ready. That's represented with this uh, darker aura. By the way, these weak auras are all available in the description of the video. I'll be uploading them. This is Lux Dose and the Flame Accelerant Bar is by Forgy. And I've kind of put them together and modified it a little bit. It's like a custom thing. So credit goes to them for making these weak auras. I just put it together and I will share the link in the description if you just want to download this. Um, but anyways, so SKB is available and we do not have a hot streak. This is ideal. 
If we have a hot streak whenever we have SKB available, that's really bad because it means that we cannot cast a hard cast Pyroblast until we get rid of the hot streak first. But our SKB is already available, so we're going to waste a stack of SKB. And wasting stacks of SKB, especially early on, is no good. Can't be doing that. Okay, so since I have SKB available, I'm going to begin casting my hard cast power blast right here, as you can see. And then as I'm hard casting this SKB, I want to have my hot streak prepped so that I can then use the instant cast with the end of the spell. Remember, we don't want to be waiting on the spell to make contact with the target dummy. In this case, I'm right next to the target dummy. It wouldn't really matter, right? But in, in a normal scenario, like think about Volcaros or just any other big boss, um, there's going to be a lot of travel time. So you do not want to be idling, waiting for your spell to make contact because your spells have travel time. Instead, you want to make sure that you're always queuing up something at the end of your cast. That could be an instant cast Power Blast with Hot Streak, or it could be another cast like a Scorch if I was below 100% haste, or a Fireball. Um, but the name of the game is we just do not want to munch stacks of SKB. We don't want to munch our Hot Streaks, and we want to always be casting a spell. Okay, so right here, as this SKB is ending, I'm going to use both of these, and I'm going to get a Hot Streak back. Now, right here, I have a hot streak available, but you'll notice I'm not going to use this instant cast. I actually need to get this fireball casted so I can use this flame accelerant buff as soon as possible. So right here, I'm going to cast fireball. And then with this fireball finishing, I'm going to also hit with this pyroblast, right? So I'm going to cue this instant cast pyroblast with the end of my fireball. And they both hit right there. And then again, we just go back to alternating between fireblast, pyroblast. And in this moment, I don't have any more phoenix flames or fireblast. So this is where I would start casting my fireball as my filler. So I'm going to be casting a fireball here. And that's without flame and cellar, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay. And then the goal is to reach this SKB right as your combustion finishes. If you did it right, this should be where you're at. You should be having this SKB available. Keep in mind, my character doesn't have that much haste. Okay. It's mainly just a double bloodlust that's giving me all this haste. But if we can reach this point, that means that we can now begin queuing up the next portion here. So we can SKB. I'm going to use a fire blast to prep the hot streak like we always do. So we can do the double uh, power blasting, All right? So you'll see it right here. I use it late so I can keep my field of burn buff up. That buff is this talent right here. Whenever fire blast or Phoenix flame hit, um, you're going to get a master increase and that stacks three times. We should always keep this at three stacks throughout combustion. It's it's pretty easy to without even really trying. Um, but just, you know, if you ever are hard casting and you can wait until the last second, try to do that. Try to get the last second refresh um, anyways. So this Power Blast Hardcast is going to finish, which is going to grant us SKB Combustion. And then also we're going to fire off this Power Blast. So it's going to be two Power Blasts after this. Power Blast, Power Blast. Okay, and we're still in Combustion. So we're going to be using Fire Blast and Phoenix Flame since we have both of those available. Just using both of those. And then right here, we are out of stuff to use again. So it's Fireball time. And it's a little unfortunate because we are so close to being able to get that... Uh, flame accelerant we almost got the <laughs> we actually almost got the glitch to happen where we get a free one uh, we'll talk more about that in just a little bit uh, just like by default it was really close but uh anyways so right here skb is uh our skb combustion is finishing we have six stacks of um skb we're about to enter our, our next one i'm gonna send this power blast and then this is where you would use your shifting power because we have no fire blast available we have no phoenix flames available we have no combustion we're basically out of juice so it should happen around 30 seconds if you're doing everything right. So right here, I'm going to start my shifting power. It's very important as you begin the shifting power that you are ready to press fire blast. The reason why is because, again, we have so much haste here. We're at like 130 percent haste. So one shifting power is going to give me more than three fire blasts. And that's not even accounting for getting fire blast back from the talent, which is this one right here, Fervent Flickering. Ignite's damage has a 5% chance to reduce the cooldown of Fire Blast by one second. So that's not even accounting for that buff. We're going to be completely over capping if we don't use at least one. So I'm going to use a Fire Blast pretty much as soon as it procs right here. As soon as I get it back from my shifting power, I use it right away. See, and now I have a hot streak available. So this hot streak, by the way, since I'm at seven stacks, this will activate our SKB buff. That means we can go right back into SKB once this finishes. So this finishes right here. As you can see, we're right at three again, even though I used one. And then I'm going to begin hard casting this Fire Blast. And I'm going to use a Fire Blast right away because I don't want to sit capped, right? You don't want to sit capped at three stacks of Fire Blast. So I'm going to use one right away as soon as I begin hard casting this uh, SKB right there. And this puts me in a great position because it means I can do the double Pyroblast thing we talked about again. 
since remember we always want to have hot streak queued or be casting another spell afterwards um we, do, we don't want to be waiting on the travel time of the spell to hit so yeah as this is going to finish we get skb boom and double pyroblast again see it right here pyroblast fireblast pyroblast pyroblast doesn't matter what this spell is at the front of it just as long as you're doing a spell you gain hot streak use the spell and the hot streak at the same time both of those return a hot streak, boom, and then you get a second power blast. That's how that works. Okay, still an SKB, right? 33 seconds in. Basically, we've been in combustion this entire time, and we're going to keep going. All right, so I have a lot of fire blasts to use, so I'm going to work through all of those. We now have a flame accelerant to use, so I'm going to use that. And we also have a phoenix flame available too. So here's the... I was a little late on that flame accelerant, but... Um, okay, right here. Now we have SKB available again. So <laughs> this is why I, I was saying before that Fire Mage is all about keeping the momentum up. Like if you can keep the momentum up and do the spells and get through all your resources as quickly as possible, you will constantly be given back combustion. Because as you can see here, I have SKB available again. And guess what? My combustion is almost off cooldown, right? Everything is ready to go here. So I'm going to start hard casting this Pyroblast. And then right here, you notice I'm letting this field of burn go all the way down to the, the wire here because I want to refresh it at the last possible second so I can maintain that three sec. And then right here, I don't have another fire blast to convert into a hot streak, so I'm going to have to cast another spell. Now, I don't have bloodlust, so that spell is going to be scorch. Outside of the open air, you're no longer going to have your bloodlust, so you basically have the same priority. Nothing really changes there. The main thing that's going to be different, though, is you're going to have more time outside of combustion, and you're going to be casting more scorches. Whenever the flame accelerant buff is, is up, though, you will cast fireballs still, and that's going to be true even in execute. So obviously, there's still going to be some fireballs in combustion, um, but uh, you really shouldn't be casting fireball in combustion unless you are uh, having your flame accelerant buff. And we haven't really talked about Flame Accelerant in depth yet, but basically there is a nice little trick you can do with it where you, you can basically cast the Fireball and try to have it end as your Flame Accelerant is coming up, and that allows you to get more uses out of it. Um, but yeah, basically we're just trying to rotate in and out of our windows of SKB. We're trying to you know use Shifting Power whenever we run out of resources, like right here. And this is just going to continue until the target reaches 30%. At that point, you're going to use Scorch as your main filler outside of Combustion even. Um, and the reason for that is for Searing Touch and also so that you can apply Improved Scorch if you have that talent currently uh, in there. The only exception to that would be you would use Flame Accelerant whenever it comes up, especially in Combustion. But uh, otherwise, just Scorching and using your Fire Blast, using your Phoenix Flames, um, and just continuing that along until the boss dies. This is going to be true for Single Target and AoE if you're playing the Ignite build. Literally the only difference between single target and playing the ignite build in AoE is just that you're going to try and put your ignites all in one target. You can swap targets whenever the target reaches uh, below 90% if you have another fire starter target, but you would only do that after you fire blast. So like we've already talked about, flame accelerant is very high priority whenever it's available, but there is a little bug that we can make use of that I keep referencing. So if I use fireball and I flame accelerant buff up, it's going to do extra damage. The cast time will be shorter. But if I begin my cast right as it becomes available and I have the cast finish right as it comes up here, notice how I got the damage from Flame Accelerant there, but I still have the Flame Accelerant buff. So this is the bug that we're abusing. We're basically making it so that we get double the Flame Accelerants. Uh, now, obviously, using it this way is a little bit less high prio because it means that uh, you don't get the reduced cast time on it, which is a, a pretty big component of it. Um, but whenever you are available to try and make use of this bug, you should. Uh, obviously, don't give up any of the other damage for it. Don't try and uh, munch procs and, and do all that stuff for this. This is just like a bonus thing. Um, so it shouldn't be like higher prio than, for instance, uh, you know, Scorching in Combustion if you're below 100% haste. But yeah, it's a nice little way to get a little extra damage out of it. So again, you have Flame Accelerant, you cast Fireball, and then this starts the timer. This is the Forgy Weak Aura. It's part of the, uh, the Weak Auras I'm, I'm offering here in this video. And then also if you cast Fireball right as it finishes, boom, see Flame Accelerant still available right there. See that? Another thing I want to briefly talk about is fishing. So if you are fishing for a hot streak, basically that concept is you're trying to have two spells hit at the same time every time we're casting. So this is basically the same concept as what we were talking about before with the double Pyroblast. Um, same idea. You just always want to end your cast with another instant cast. That way you have two spells hitting at the same time because there's actually a grace period for hot streak and heating up. 
so that if uh, one of those spells crits and the other one doesn't, if they both hit at the same time, you're essentially doubling the chance that you would crit. And that means you're going to generate more hot streaks. This is just something for like outside of combustion. Um, it's not really used as much now because we spend a lot more time in combustion these days, but it's something that you should be aware of. So just sending the Pyroblast on its own without a cast accompanying it um, outside of combustion is usually a little bit worse than trying to spend it with another cast. So they hit at the same time. All right, let's talk AoE. And when it comes to the Ignite build, you basically just single target. So there's not really much else to really talk about there aside from just using Living Bomb. If you're outside of combustion, uh, like above five targets, that's fine. Um, but when it comes to the Flame Strike build, essentially the idea is we just replace our Pyroblast with uh, with Flame Strike. But uh, here you're going to see me as I run up to the pole. I just try to have my Molten Barrier up. I try to get my mirror image out so that I don't have any threat. It's always good to do. And then as I'm running into the pole, I'm going to throw out a Phoenix Flame and then I'm going to throw out my Meteor. And as soon as I get my Meteor out, I'm going to double Bloodlust, use Combustion and my Potion and my Trinket all at the same time. And then I'm going to Fire Blast into a Flame Strike right here. So I'm just going to alternate between using Fire Blast and Flame Strike over and over and over again until I'm completely uh, out of Phoenix Flames and Fire Blast. You'll see right here, I get my SKB. It's very important as Flame Strike that you do not do what we talked about before with the instant cast hot streak at the end of the hard cast. You must hard cast this with only a heating up. The reason for that is if you do it with a hot streak, you will munch a proc. Flame Strike hard cast is different. So whenever we Flame Strike hard cast, we always make sure we only have a heating up. As soon as this finishes, you're going to see uh, me get a hot streak and I'm going to just instantly use that Flame Strike. So right here that comes out instantly and then I'm back to spamming uh, Fire Blast into Flame Strike, Phoenix Flames into Flame Strike. Here I'm going to use a Fireball as a filler since we have above 100% haste. And then uh, I fall out of Combustion just for a moment there, so I use a Dragon's Breath. And then I'm also going to use my Shifting Power here. Um, I'm going to try and get a, uh, a Hot Streak from it. So as soon as I press my Shifting Power, I'm going to instantly use two Fire Blasts here just so that I don't cap out, right? Because we have a lot of haste. Don't want to be capping out there. Um, and then we're back to using our Flame Strike. Again, SKB is available. So here, as long as I only have a heating up, I'm fine. I just can't have a hot streak. So I'm going to use this fire blast here because I don't have any heating up. And I use it kind of towards the end. And this gives me the hot streak. And then here we're just alternating between fire blast and Phoenix flame again until this is ended. But that's basically the idea. Everything else is the same. Um, we still use Scorch below 100% haste. We still use Fireball above 100% haste. The only difference is we're using Flame Strike instead of Pyroblast. And we are always SKBing doing the hard cast flame strike without a hot streak. That's the big thing. All right, and that's going to be it for today's video. So if you made it to the end, do me a favor, scroll down, click that like button, and then afterwards, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and ring that notification bell after you click the subscribe button. I'd also like to thank FlexiSpot again for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link if you're interested in anything like standing desks, chairs, all that good stuff. And uh, as always, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.